right, Lead Heads, we are back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. This is episode 352. <laughs> wow. I uh, think so. Uh, coming off our Talking Lead AK Corner presented by Century Arms. Had a great episode there. If you guys didn't get a chance, make sure you go back and listen to that. We had our, of course, presenting sponsor, Century Arms. We had the giant himself, Adam Ranala, joining us. Uh, limited uh, capacity there with his connection. I think they're having storms or something. Uh, but we did get him on this episode. Uh, and then, of course, uh, our good buddy Brian with Occam Defense Solutions, um, spreading the knowledge as usual, as you would expect, um, hitting us with all kinds of knowledge knowledge bombs about the AK-47, the history, uh, and then, of course, uh, where it's headed and uh, they're a big part in, in the modernization of the, the AKM, the AK-47 platforms. Uh, we, had, we had a big, big guest list. We had uh, Primary Arms on. We had Miranda and Ian from Primary Arms, where they are developing optics that are specific for the 762 by 39 They've got uh, reticles and BDCs developed specifically for that round, which, of course, the AK-47 fits into that category. So uh, great to have Miranda and Ian on. I think you're probably going to hear more from Primary Arms in um, upcoming episodes. Uh, and then we also had some uh, Texans on. We had 212 Training Group. We have Jared Seagraves with the 212 Training Group. They're out of Texas. And they are doing some phenomenal classes that are specifically geared for dogs. Oh, wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the AK-47. Uh, that kind of that ruined your intro there, dude. So. <laughs> well, that's okay. So, uh, as you can hear, I've got my guest uh, there in the background. He's got his dogs with him. He's outside. Uh, and it is none other than Jared Seagraves with 212 Training Group. Welcome in, Jared. Man, thanks thanks for having me back, Marty. It was great to be here last week, and I'm looking forward to another show. Absolutely. So you and I have been talking uh, back and forth through texts and, and phone calls, and uh, you've got a lot of good things going on. And uh, you'd hit me with an idea for a show, and I thought, you know, what better time to do it than now? And uh, that's what we're going to be doing today with Jared. We're going to be talking about how to make the most out of your training session, how to be a good student. So um, he's got a lot of good tips for you guys, for you lead heads, guys and gals, on uh, how to maximize your time in class and get the most out of it. And uh, we're going to get into that, Jared, here coming up. Sounds great. We've got a lot to dig into. We do, we do. But first, you know what I hear? I hear that talking the jack lead. wagon. That's right. The talking lead jack wagon trains rolling in. But before we get into that real quick, uh, I got to thank our sponsors. So make sure you guys go and show our sponsors some love because without them, this show is not possible. Uh, and it's not possible for you to listen to free each and every week. Uh, this being the 300, what I say? 300 and 352. 352nd said. episode. That's right. So go show Caltech weapons some love. Uh, I'd made an announcement last week, um, not last week, but the episode before that they were having a 20% off on their RDBs. I'm sure those are probably sold out now. Uh, but Chad over there at Keltec, you're like, uh, I didn't think Keltec were resellers of their firearms. And they're really not, but sometimes they'll get surplus orders or returned orders, uh, and then they'll post them for sale on their website. And in turn, that usually means a good deal for the consumer. And I think that's what happened with some of these RDBs. Uh, but you can still go and try and check and see if they still have some of those RDBs at the 25% off price. Uh, but still, I mean, even uh, at regular retail, when you can find them, those are really good deals anyway. Uh, the sub-2000s, the uh, RFBs, which is their 308 uh, rifle. And I got one of those RDBs, um, Jared couple of weeks ago i've been trying it out i'm gonna 
kit it up and use it for hunting like we discussed with the uh, 762 the ods 1775 uh, i'm going to take them both out this season and uh kind of do a little competition with them and see which one takes down the most meat <laughs> well maybe if i can get you to come to texas you can bring it bring them both and uh we'll go see what we can tear up go tear some hogs maybe yeah there's plenty of that to be done around here there are a lot of hogs in texas so that that sounds like a pretty good deal to me we'll try to make that happen uh and then also mission first tactical We've got a 20% lead head discount available for you listeners. You go to their website, and anything on their website, you use the code LEADHEAD. You're going to get 20% off at Mission First Tactical. And uh, I've been working with David and, you know, with this, everybody uh, trying to make their way through this COVID and and the shutdowns and whatnot. You know, they were no uh, exception to that, and they had to shut down for a while, and they're still trying to get their – you know, their system back up and running. And when they do, we're going to do that giveaway with Keltec, with Mission First Tactical, with uh, Fioki, uh, another sponsor of the Talking Lead podcast. It's been a while, so you forgive me. I forgot who all was involved with that. But we'll update that once we uh, get the clear from David over there at Mission First Tactical. Uh, but we're going to be giving away that CP33 from Keltec, custom holster from Mission First Tactical. Uh, I think Keltec threw in a, a light, a flashlight as well as part of that package. Fioki's going to throw in some ammo. Man, that's a heck of a package right there. Oh, and uh, buck knives. And buck knives too. Don't forget that. <laughs> buck knives has thrown in a very nice uh, one of their knives for that. So when that gets uh, closer to being ready again, you know, I'm going to let you guys know. Um, LEO Takedown. We had Joe on not too long ago uh, with LEO takedown that's the uh system that you can use on your ar-15 to turn it into uh multiple calibers you know a quick switch of the barrel and you've been able to shoot multiple calibers uh different size scenarios so different size lengths of barrels so if you want to go close quarter combat and then real quick you need to go long range precision change the barrel out if it, you know obviously if it requires a change of the bolt you'll have to change the bolt too uh, but as long as it's compatible with that AR-15 platform, the LEO takedown is going to work. And they've got that discount for you guys set up. Again, it's the code LEADHEAD. Use that. You're going to get 10% off. And then uh, he's got some other things coming for you guys. Um, I was trying to get everything in order for you for this show, but it didn't happen. So we'll make some social media posts. Uh, but they've got some other cool deals for you LEADHEADS, and we'll make those announcements coming up soon. But uh, we'll talk about some more of our sponsors and things going on later on in the show. We got to get to this jack wagon train. So, Gunny, bring that train in. Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week. So, brace yourself, baby. All right. So, the train has stationed. And we've got some jack wagons we want to take care of, Jared. You, you, did you have a hard time finding any, or are, are they in short supply? There's never a short supply, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, of the jack wagons. It's, you know, it seems harder to find the heroes than it is the jack wagons. Uh, but we're going to start harder with, every day. Yeah, with the jack wagons. Do you have anybody in mind? How about the, uh, how about the reboot of the Looney Tunes sands some weapons? You know, that is an excellent one. Um, I don't know what the whole, you know, again, it's one of those things that people think if knee jerk reaction, if I do this and it's just going to, you know, it's going to make everything better, better world and all this. But if you watch the cartoons, they're still, they still got knives and axes and dynamite and, <laughs> you know, bl blowing people up and stuff. So it, it won't be long before they try to take the violence from, uh, the, you know, the coyote and the roadrunner for sure. I mean, oh, they'll just drop inevitable. it completely. Yeah, they'll drop that. Yeah, and yep. and Foghorn Leghorn, you know him and the the uh, Chicken Hawk. Yep, that was nothing. I mean, that's all Looney Tunes are. They're all violent, and it's and it's all lighthearted slapstick. And then we've got to make this something political. It's ridiculous. You got to make it into something. You know, it reminds me of the stories that you read. And I wasn't alive back in you know the time you know when comic books were being censored. And they were, you know, they were making people go out and burn 
their comic books. They were having like comic book burning uh, sessions, and this was like back in the, I guess before World War II. Uh, back in that yeah, time, yeah, that whole First Amendment thing didn't apply then, huh? It well, you know, it it I don't guess it did, and but they, you know, the government and the leftists and you know the censors censor bureau, they were blaming all the violence and all the the problems of society on, on comic books because, you know, they were a new thing and they just came out and that had to be the problem. We were, uh, my, my oldest daughter just finished her freshman year at Texas tech and they're the red Raiders and, you know, part of their, uh, their basically battle call is guns up. And we yeah. were sitting at a football game last November and my wife and I were talking about wonder how long it's going to be before they come under fire for that. Well, the, our, our local university uh, has been under fire. Uh, it's my alma mater, MTSU, Middle Tennessee State University, and they've always been known as the Blue Raiders, which they were named after Nathan Bedford Forrest, you know, Civil War general, and his Raiders. They're under the microscope now, aren't they? No, they have been for years here. And, uh, oh, really? Uh, I don't know. Probably ten years ago or more, they had taken down you know any memorials or anything like that that had to do with Nathan Bedford Forrest, and which you know I don't necessarily disagree with it, but you know still, you know history's history. Uh, I mean, we don't necessarily celebrate it, but you still leave it in in remembrance, and you know you don't ever want to forget history because it's. It'll repeat then itself. you can't learn from it, right? Then you can't learn from it. Yeah. But anyway, you know, I I digress with that. But yes, the Looney Tunes. You know, we're talking about the Looney Tunes taking away Elmer Fudd and uh, Yosemite Sam's guns. They've disarmed them. I wonder if Marvin's going to get to keep his blaster. So Marvin I don't, the Martian. I don't know if the have they like retro done that and gone back and taking the guns out of the old ones or they just not showing those old ones or everything from this point forward is going to be that way i don't know i haven't read that much about it yeah i think it's going to be everything everything from this point forward because i was watching some on is it the new hbo app that's doing the looney tunes i think yep and um i watched through a couple of those and none of the characters had guns up until they got to martian Marvin the Martian, and he pulled out his his blaster, <laughs> whatever yeah. whatever it is, the P fifty two space modulator. I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe it's because it looks more like a squirt gun, like like the uh, because, Apple emoji, you know. Because uh, laser guns aren't real yet, maybe. Yes, there there you go. There's the justification. You're onto something. Because they're not real yet, <laughs> so that we know of. <laughs> that we know of. Yeah. I mean, with the uh, you know the release of the new Space Force. Hey, it's it, they're around the corner. I mean, they probably it's already gonna got be, them. It's gonna be probably already <laughs> got them. Probably got those phasers or those uh, uh, blasters from Star Wars. I don't know. Yep. But no, with that's no, a good one. No stun setting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's a good one. So that was also one of our lead heads. Uh, nominations here. Let me find my jack wagon train. That would have been yeah. Jason Edgar also nominated the uh, the Looney Tune. Ed Burton sends us this one, and this comes out of Dallas. It says Dallas County Judge Clay Jenkins said, "This is the time for change and introduce new directives he wants to see implemented for local cities and law enforcement." Uh, and then it's during a video tweet, he encouraged conversations about race and discrimination in our community. Along with the video, he tweeted 10 new directives. Uh, so it looks like this starts with one, the Dallas Police Department shall not be the first responder to mental health calls unless a firearm is involved. Jointly, the city of Dallas and Dallas County shall create a program that assigns uh, teams of mental health professionals or, as appropriate, other professionals in counseling and social work as first responders to mental health calls unless a firearm is involved outside of the police department. If a firearm is involved, these mental health teams will provide support to police officers responding to mental health. Uh, the mental health team may take the lead in a 
joint police health response when appropriate, for example, threatened suicide with a firearm. That was one. So, so how, how fast do you think that chain of command and communication will occur in order for them to make that determination and then put a response into effect? Do you think it'll take longer than the actual event itself? Keystone cops, dude. <laughs> That's what I see happening there. Wow. The, the, this is the one that uh, is, is kind of the quirky one here. The, this is number four. So the city of Dallas and Dallas Police Department will adopt specific policies restricting the use of deadly force. Officers shall not shoot their firearms, one, if a suspect is unarmed, two, if a suspect is running away or attempting to withdraw, Three, if a suspect is driving away or sitting in a parked car. Four, if a suspect is not armed with a firearm. For example, when a suspect is holding a knife, screwdriver, or blunt object. And five, if the officer is alone. For example, after a solo foot chase. In the event that deadly force is used, officers shall not shoot multiple times at a suspect without reevaluating the necessity of additional deadly force. Let's just stew on that for a minute. <laughs> so if the officer's being attacked or someone is being attacked by a knife in the presence of a police officer, they are not to shoot them. They are not to shoot them. They, mu- I guess they're just going to use their hand, their jujitsu skills, whatever they're actually trained in by the department, right? Uh, I, I think they're just supposed to sit there and let it happen, and or or just or just back off, or run away, or run, or go hide in their car. Get in their car and lock the door, and mm. let the the knife murdering spree continue. So these officers that that are learning of this, how how do you think they feel about showing up for work tomorrow? Well, I think you and I discussed this offline, and aren't the numbers already dropping? They're dropping, with, with you know, and I, police I don't, officers I don't resigning. Know how, yeah, I don't know how accurate um, this estimation was, but I think I heard six or eight months ago that Dallas PD was a thousand officers short, and you know, now this is just going to exacerbate the problem, and there it's happening all over the country. These guys are walking off, and who can blame them? Yeah, it's. I mean, the liability is is to the point now to where it's just it's not worth it. I nope. mean, even if this is somebody you know feels the calling that you know this is their life work, and police officers don't make that that great a pay anyway, especially for the crap that they have to put up with. Um, so I mean, I only see the numbers continuing to dwindle, you know. And then you know they talk about defunding the police. You know, they don't need to defund our our law enforcement, they need to increase the funding to increase training because that's where, you know, that's, that's the problem is, is the lack of training. Absolutely. These men and women that are out there, you know, they're, they're tasked with, um, you know, going out and making our, our city streets safe, but yet they're not given the, the education, the knowledge and the skills that they need and equipment to, to a large extent that they need to be able to do that effectively. And criminals are more emboldened every single day to move against them. Absolutely. And especially with what's going on right now. I mean, you saw the riots. I mean, it was pretty much a free-for-all. It's like, all right, you've got carte blanche to go out there and do all the um, murder and mayhem that you want. And that's exactly and what's happened because police officers the- have been murdered, and you don't hear about the police officers that have been murdered during these, these riots. These protests and many many of these city leaders are in support of this. While their cities and businesses in their city are being destroyed, burnt to the ground, lives being threatened, and it's mm-hmm. just amazing. I don't even know what world we live in. I definitely don't agree with the defunding. I do agree with the you know it needs to be reevaluated that uh, you know how law enforcement uh, reacts and uh, is used. But what, what's happening, where is the discussion about evaluating how our society reacts? You know, and, and not, I don't want to go down this rabbit hole too much, but 
I kind of alluded to the fact the other day that I taught public school for a while and mm -hmm. and we wrestle with all the problems that teachers wrestle with and so much of it boils down to a societal issue that there's no way we're going to correct. It all goes back to the environment at home, the family environment. All of these things have such an impact on, on the societal issues that we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. we, we, the solutions are not easy and it's going to hurt. And we've got to look at some really hard things that are happening, you know, in the home. And and so some people are saying, yeah, if we want to defund these police departments, we want to reallocate some of that funding to social work and things like that to help the home. But so many of these programs we've poured money into over the years with very little in impact mm -hmm. or measurable impact. So taking money away from these departments is not the answer. We need to train them further and then figure out how to reach the homes and the families of Americans and, and change the roots of, of our societal, these, yeah. these issues. I, I don't, don't know, think a lot of people understand what defunding the police means. Right. You know, defunding means you're taking away the ability to, to pay for... Pay officers to, to pay for you know these uh these individuals that for the most part 99.9% .9 of them are out there working diligently professionally uh, in a caring manner and then you've got sure. you know this this 1% you know they put the extra money in screening their officers and then training them once they get in there to be able to handle these stressful situations uh you know, de-escalation is, you know, huge. Probably, you know, in the majority of these murders that have happened, the police officers involved, you know, if there had been more uh, de-escalation training, uh, you prob we pr probably would not be where we're at today. But if you get rid of the police, then what's that leave? Who's going to come in and police the streets, no the criminals? No one is coming. Yeah, there's, there's somebody. There, there are, military's there coming. Faced. Then the sure. military's coming, you know. Yeah. Then, then then you've got militarization of the police, you and know, everyone will blame. Law. Everyone will blame not only local government but state government and federal government. It, it's just going to cascade, and everyone's going to want to point the finger of blame at leadership. Mm -hmm. And when the people stand up and say they want this type of change, and then they get what they ask for. And not everybody's asking for this. I understand that. But when you when you know play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. We've heard this over and over for the last couple of weeks. When when people find themselves in these situations, they're going to want to blame everybody else but themselves. Yep. And the people that don't want this need to really pay attention at the next election. I'm talking about local levels, and you know we're we're pretty insulated right here. Um, but it, it's not far off. It's not far off. You are right. You are correct. Yep. And, you know, and that's, per personal that's, responsibility. Personal responsibility. Absolutely. And speaking of personal responsibility, that's kind of going to be our topic today. In uh, absolutely in, in the training. Uh, I think that's good for the jack wagon train right now. I'm going to get worked up if we keep talking about this crap. <laughs> it's easy to get worked up over it, this. It is. It certainly is. Uh, and, you know, this politics and the hypocrisy that's. Anyway, what about some heroes? We got to have some heroes out there. And you leadheads have not sent me any heroes. I want to see more heroes. Send me leadhead brigade heroes. I want to. I want to fill up lead force one. Talkingled at gmail dot com. And send me some of your lead brigade heroes, people that really need recognition on things that they're doing in the community, in our world, uh, or maybe it's a product or you know something that's making lives better. I want to hear about that. Talkingled at gmail .com. What about you? Anything come to mind right off? Man, heroes. Any good, Everything's good been stuff? so dominated with this mess. Um, it, it's hard. It's hard to come up with one right now. I know. It's been pretty dark. What do you got? You got any good ones? Uh, as we're talking, I'm scanning through the news just to see if anything pops out. But, you know, here's here's what I want to see. I, 
You know, we've been shut down. This country, this world's been shut down for several months now, and it's reopening. You know, the the world is reopening. People are getting back out there. Day to day lives are continuing. People are. I don't think schools have started back yet, but um, no. Business- Governor Abbott here in Texas said that that public schools will open back up um, in August here. Oh, so oh, you guys we'll, are we'll open up in still, August. Okay. Open up in August. Yep. Very back good. to it. So you know, you were talking about businesses. I, I think I don't have one specific, but I think a lot of these businesses that fought to stay open during all this. Mm-hmm. Um, those are some heroes, you know, they, they fought hard and they received a lot of pushback. I know in, in Dallas County and, and some other places around the state of Texas, there were some local business owners that basically said, Hey, I'm staying open. You're not going to stop me. This is my livelihood. And they fought a good fight. And I think they're, they're heroes. Absolutely. And that's kind of what I was alluding to is the, the companies, uh, especially the smaller, you know, the mom and pop companies that have fought through this. And, uh, you know, they stayed open, done business the best they can. Uh, you know, kudos to those people. They definitely deserve a ride on Lead Force One. Uh, now, those companies that took that, that money from the government that didn't deserve it, <laughs> those multi-million dollar companies, you know, they're jack wagons, no, no doubt. Absolutely. Uh, but we've got Father's Day coming up, too. Uh, it's, it's just around the corner. What, uh, what day is Father's Day? Do you know? It's, it's this coming Sunday, which is the 21st. Is that right? So Okay. The, this Sunday. It's that soon, huh? Okay. Yeah, this <laughs> so, Sunday. So a perfect time for you guys to go out and patronize our sponsors of the show. You go to Mission First Tactical, use that discount code, go to LEO Takedown. Uh, if you got a dad, I'm sure he would love that system on his AR-15 to be able to switch uh, from 223 to 65 Creedmoor to 458 SOCOM to, you know, uh, whatever. Uh, that would be a great prize, uh, a great present. Keltec, you know, they've got some great things on their website other than just the firearms uh, that you can get from Keltec. they got some cool swag. Uh, 1776 United, great time to go and get your Talking Lead t-shirts if you haven't gone and got those yet. Uh, you go to 1776 United, and uh, we've got the classic Talking Lead t-shirt. We've got the Lead Head Brigade shirts there and the Lead Head Brigade patches that you can get. You can go to go. You can go to our buddy Danny over at Dipstick Hydrographics, dip123.com. Uh, or actually, it's dip123.com. I think that's what I said. Dip123.com. Uh, and you can get the Talking Leddies. Uh, Jared, you can see me drinking from my Talking Letty right here. Yeah, I'm going to have to nice, scoop me up one of those. Nice big uh, mug there. You put your favorite beverage of choice in. You can get those over uh, from Danny. Uh, and Buck Knives, always uh, running special deals over there. Uh, they had their cutlery sets on sale not too long ago. That would have been an awesome Father's Day gift. They probably sold out of those already. Who else? Who else we got here? ASP. Uh, they've got the, the flashlights, the tactical lights, and accessories. Use the LED 20. You're going to get 20% discount over at ASP USA. Uh, and then, of course, modern Spartan systems for all your gun cleaning and lubrication needs. Go to modern Spartan systems and use that code TLCP15. And not only are you going to get 15% discount, they're going to donate 15%, an additional 15%, to Camp Patriot. Uh, worthwhile veterans organization that uh, gets our veterans off the couch and uh, does some great outdoor adventures for them there. And then, of course, Sheepdog Impact Assistance. Uh, they've got several events coming up, so you guys go check out sheepdogia.org. And uh, that charity auction, I think it's rescheduled for August, and we're going to have some cool um, items up for auction for there that you guys will be able to bid on and there's going to be stuff from Caltech and Canic and uh, LEO. I think he's going to throw some stuff in. And um, there's a blue bazillion other friends of the show and sponsors that are, are donating to that. So as we get more details, I'll get you guys tuned in on that as well. The Fiocchi family has been producing high-quality ammunition since 1876. In 2020, Fiocchi is launching a full line of premium products, everything from self and home defense to the long-range categories. 
The Fioki Blue Guardian line will feature specially tuned products specifically for home and self-defense. Featuring lead-free technology and the only NATO certified zero pollution primer in the world. Fioki is a proud sponsor of the Talking Lead Podcast and the Leadhead Brigade. Fioki trains, Fioki protects. But uh, what I was getting at is that as the world is reopening, you know, I've missed movies. I don't know if you're a big movie buff or not, but I've missed movies. I'm, I'm a huge movies buff, but, you know, Netflix and all these good good things at home that you we know, get to keep streaming that. But but we, you like the experience of going to the theater, huh? I, 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 every now and again, I do. It's got to be a worthwhile movie, so... You know, and you're you're probably around my age a little bit younger, but you know, Top Gun. That you know, that was like small time. I cannot movie. wait. I cannot wait for it to come out. Have you seen the trailer? I have seen the trailer. Oh, it's, you know, it's that's be so like good. been one of the one of the biggest things that's irked me during this whole shutdown is that 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 was supposed to have already been released. And yeah, uh, July, early. No, I thought it was July, right? Was it July when it was coming? I thought it was July this Probably year. Probably July, yeah. So, but I I don't know if it's still coming or not. I don't think movies are supposed to be open in July, so um, you know, that's been pushed. But I mean, there's like a whole slew of movies that uh I was looking forward to. The Black Widow movie, the new Marvel movie Black Widow. Yeah, that was going to be good. Uh, My kids were really looking forward to that one. The James Bond, the new James Bond movie, No Time to Die. I think that's Daniel Craig's last James Bond movie or supposed to be. Anyway. I didn't even know that one was coming out. Yeah, the Wonder Woman movie. I mean, there's all kinds of cool movies that... The the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, I was a big comic book geek growing up. So, you know, the fact that Marvel and DC have made it to the big screen and they've done it to the quality that that they've been doing it. Yeah, it's just... It's really exciting to see that you know your childhood comic books come to life on the big screen, and uh, that's something that as the world is yeah, but, opening but, up, I'm but really, hey, hmm? but aren't there guns in those movies? Uh, there there are some guns. Yeah, there are some guns are, and some violence. And there there's a little bit of violence, a little bit of sexuality, you know. Uh, and don't but don't the, don't the good guys usually win? Not always. <laughs> not always not always if you saw uh, you know uh, infinity war yeah poor iron man i'm no no spoilers here i'm not gonna say what happens yep. <laughs> <laughs> they've been out long enough <laughs> well you'd think but some people uh <laughs> you just never know uh and then another one that i'm looking forward to that's supposed to be coming out is bill and ted excellent Is dust in the wind, dude. You remember Bill and Ted? Absolute classic. Yeah, yeah <laughs> great. Can't <laughs> wait for it. Bill and Ted face the music. I can't wait for that. And it's the it's Keanu and the guy Alex. Uh, I can't remember what his last name. I was. I, I bet it's going to be pretty excellent. <laughs> <laughs> be excellent to one another. You know, e- if people excellent. would just live that mantra. We wouldn't be having exactly. We wouldn't be having this these issues that we're having right now. Keanu had it right even back then, but look what he's resorted to now. He just shoots a bunch of people. <laughs> he's turned into what? John Wick. What's yeah. up? With, what's up with that? One of the best on-screen firearms manipulators there are <laughs> <laughs> in history. Uh, but as I was, you know, as the world reopens, this is what I've missed. This is what I'm looking forward to. Uh, as things reopens, get the movies back up and going, or at least release them to, you know, to the uh, streaming. Straight to streaming, yeah, yeah. Yep. I mean, they've done some, but they're not doing like their big money makers. They're still pocketing those, because I mean, that's a whole. I mean, that's a billion dollar industry. I mean, let's absolutely face it. tens of billions. So I, I don't think people will ever stop going to watch it on the big screen. It's just, you know, the experience. Even with this COVID, people are going to get over it. You know, give it, you know, give it six months, give it a year after everything's, you know, we get the green light on everything. People forget about COVID. 
It's like they forget about I, everything. It's like they forgot about nine eleven. You know. Yeah. Jack wagons. I, I don't know what they put in the popcorn there, but you can't seem to replicate it at home. <laughs> exactly right. I know people that get those uh, buckets, those refill buckets. As long as you bring it to the movie theater, they'll re- refill it for like a half price or something like that. No, use them for like six years. They'll just go and get the popcorn and not even go to a movie. They'll get the popcorn and leave. <laughs> Crazy. What about you? What's something that you're really looking forward to once the world reopens here full time? Man, honestly, it hasn't been terribly, too terribly different other than restaurants. Um, my wife and I love to go to Austin, even to Waco, and, and just go eat. We love good food. You know, it's our chance to get to sit down and, and visit and, and not have to worry about the distractions of kids and, and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's what we've missed the most, I think, is being able to do that. So we're looking forward to that. I got you. Otherwise, so you guys our, haven't, our dated, you, your restaurants haven't reopened there? No, that they're starting to. They're okay. starting to. Um, so we just haven't had the chance to, to get out there and do it uh, since they have. It's just gotcha. been busy. Yeah, and, and you are a busy man. So let's get uh, let's get the jack wagon train out of here, and uh, you know, like I said, leadheads, get me some heroes. We want we want more heroes than we want jack wagons, but keep the jack wagons coming too, because you know we don't want them to get away with with anything. Talk those lead, are easy to find. That's right. Talkingled gmail dot com. Send those in to me. Uh, so let's get into our topic, Jared. We want to talk about how to make the most out of your training session. Before we do that, and and people who didn't have the benefit of listening to the AK Corner, uh, tell us tell us about two twelve training and yourself. How you got into the the training business? Well, um, I don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time on this. I I, like so many people that you've you've spoken with, and I speak to um, in the in the firearms community. I grew up hunting and shooting and I, you know i remember my my granddad teaching me how to shoot a uh, little ruger bearcat revolver 22 when i was five or six you know and they firearms had always been a part of life um hunted off and on always felt fairly confident but um i took my first formal training in 2011 and at the time i was already in i had trained um thoroughbred horses and bred horses in the thoroughbred industry um, at that time for 10 or 11 years. And I had transitioned out of that business into into public education. It was teaching science at the time. It actually loved it. Um, but a friend and I decided to go take our first formal training. It was a three-day Magpul Dynamics class. And within an hour, we got smacked in the face with everything that we didn't even know that we didn't know. I mean, we had no idea what we were doing you know that's um, i don't mean to interrupt you here but no go ahead when i took my first real training course it's like i didn't know what i didn't know i didn't know how dead i would have been if i'd ever gotten into an altercation you know or how Absolutely. dead how dead somebody would have been that didn't need to be dead <laughs> yeah hit hit the nail on the head right there yeah and, and that and it 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 worried me to the point that I, I quit. I had my license to carry at the time. I quit carrying um, because it, it, it bothered me that much. And so we kept rocking along. And that, that one of my best friends, Kenny Stallman, and I, we, we, kept, we just dove in. And we went to every training we could. And we soaked up every bit of knowledge that we could. And the more we learned, the more we realized there was way more to learn. So... I'd, I'd always kind of been a teacher. I've also been a farrier for about 25 years now. And I'd, I'd taught a lot of that within the equine industry for years. And I always enjoyed teaching. I enjoyed teaching uh, clients that we had. And I always loved teaching. I loved teaching, teaching middle school science, too. So I was able to, what motivated me is I wanted to, well, Kenny and I both, we wanted to share it started out with just like family and friends. Mm-hmm. We wanted to bring them into this world that we had been shown, you know, and, and the more people came in and learned and we saw the same experience in them that we had had. And, and that's incredibly rewarding. And, and it's just fun. It, it really gave us a new appreciation for learning new stuff. 
And um, so that that's what kind of motivated us. And it started out with, like I said, family and friends. And then we thought, well, let's start doing some some local stuff. And uh, we started putting on some handgun classes. And then it turned into some rifle classes. And, and it just grew. And, you know, along the way, I've, I've had the opportunity to learn from and work with some of the most phenomenal teachers. Um, and, and I've also been to some trainings that, that I thought were beneficial, but from a teaching standpoint, um, I thought that, you know, things could have maybe been done a little different and not really criticizing um, the specific individuals, but right, um, right. I, start, I started thinking more about my learning style and then how could I better reach more people through understanding different learning styles, which I'd already kind of kind of, you know, addressed in, in education. So, um, that's how it all started. And we just, we just want to bring knowledge, which inevitably is, is power to more people. And I know that where I was before this, as far as my ability with, with a firearm Mm -hmm. and I, and I know where a lot of owners are, a lot of people that have their LTCs and we, we just want to share this knowledge. You know, we, that's, that's all it boils down to. And like you said, there's no better time than right now to invest in yourself. And you hit it right on the head. We don't know how we're going to re- respond in, in a stressful situation. I don't know how I'm going to, but I want to take every step I can to make sure that I don't harm one of my only family, one of my own family members or someone out in this world that surrounds us. Or an that, innocent. Yeah. I, Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, that that's what kind of got us going down this road. And I've really been thinking a lot. You know, I talked with you last week about, one, how do we get more people to come to the training table? And two, how do we make sure they maximize their investment in time and money and ammo and time away from their family or away from their job, whatever the case may be. It's very, very hard to allocate the time to that. And I want people right. to make the most of it, whether they're going to a one-day training or a three-day training, you know, whatever it, it might that's be. A, that's a must. If you're going to be, if you're going to own a firearm, especially if you're going to carry a firearm out in public, you know, that's one of your responsibilities is to get you know, the best training that you can get. Sure. But, but think about I don't know what the Tennessee, um, you know, certification is like. Um, I don't know what a lot of states are. But Doesn't I matter. The certification is. is not training. I don't. It, I don't exactly. care what state you're in. That's not training. There's Absolutely. no training. There's no training iota. You know, one iota in in that. That's just so you can get a permit and you can you can give the the government their money. Absolutely. And, and then, and, and, and then and you get to exercise so your times. Second Amendment right, which you shouldn't have to pay for to begin with. Shouldn't have but to, to be a responsible it. citizen, a responsible two uh, a uh, member, community you know community member, you know you need to train. You need to know how to use your firearm properly, safely, uh, and expediently in a safe manner. Absolutely, and and when not to use it. You know, not not just that you need to use when it, but when not, not to, to use, use it. it. You know, which is going to be ninety nine point nine percent of the time. And, and and speaking to that, our brains, our thought process needs to be dedicated to that decision. Do I use it or not? It shouldn't be, our, our, our neurons shouldn't be trying to process the gun itself. We need to be processing the situation to make that determination. And you can't do that if you haven't put in the work ahead of time with the gun, period. Exactly. Um, so that that's kind of you know where we're at. We we want to help people go you know run down that road and yeah. And you know, with so no many military- you know we we're hearing in the news day in and day out, firearm sales are increasing, record highs, and you know it's it's new gun owners that are going out there. It's not people like you and me and our friends and people that listen to this show that are going out. It's brand new, never have owned a firearm in their life people. These right. are the people that need the training. So, what you know, if I'm one of these people, you know, what would you tell them? What's the first step that they need to do? 
So the first step, and in fact, we have a lot of people that uh, contact us and say, well, we want to come train, but we haven't bought a gun yet. And we're going to we're going to try and go get that done fairly quickly. And so I, I want to address those individuals first. OK, um, we usually tell them, don't go don't go make a purchase yet. OK, because so many times um, people show up with a specific firearm in a specific holster, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't run. It's not reliable. The ergonomics aren't there. The, the Show holster with a desert, is a mess. Desert Eagle, <laughs> or 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 they're going to come to a class if they've read their email where they're going to run 500 rounds in a day, and they show up with a um, a bodyguard, you know, yeah. 380. Yeah. So, to if you are in the market, and I know a large percentage of this audience this isn't you because you guys have your your firearms but if you know people that are are in the market it's so important to give them the opportunity to try different platforms different guns and try to make the best single purchase they can because one of the worst things one of the worst feelings is for somebody to have buyer's remorse they go out and buy a um, anything and then they get to a training and realize this gun doesn't fit me. I don't like it. I like that one better. I wish I would have bought that one. Oh, yeah, I hear that all um, the time. I mean, I, I get asked, so, you know, so at least that, five times a week. You know, I'll get a text or an email. It's like, hey, I'm going out to buy. What do you recommend? You know, right. It's like, and that's a hard – you can't do that by over text. You well, know? It, it's easy because I say go to a local gun range that has rentals. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, I I, I want to talk about handguns are like shoes, you know. And I've made this analogy before. Fit. You know, I can't wear Nikes. Never have been able to wear Nikes. These don't feel good on my feet. Um, but I, I wouldn't know that unless I tried them on. You know, and, exactly. And then you know, I've yep. eventually found some that that fit. Same thing with a handgun. Everybody's hand is different. Your size, everybody's of your hand, hand is different. Your feel of your hand, your fingers, and that's why there's so many different options out there is because people are different and there are a couple a couple that will gravitate to and and we'll try and kind of push people to but that that's more of a reliability discussion that that we can get to but sure um so new gun owners that's what i would suggest you alluded to the, those ranges that uh will will rent guns there's not a lot of those some of the bigger metropolitan areas have indoor ranges where you can go do that mm -hmm. um and, and that's awesome i guess we're just spoiled um, around here because we've got you know several ranges that will do that we've got nashville armory we've got on target here local and then also in nashville you've got uh you know, rural range usa and i mean it, they just spoil people because they've got such a good variety that you can rent there and and get a feel of it. I think they'll even like, hey, if you're thinking about buying a SIG and they don't have one for rent, they'll let you go out and shoot it, you know, in the range. And I don't want to speak for them, but I think that's what they do. Right. Well, that that's invaluable. That's yeah. invaluable from a consumer standpoint where you can go do that. I mean, you when you go buy a car, you're going to go test drive the car to yeah. see if you like it, see if exactly. it fits you. Yeah. It shouldn't. It should be the same in in this industry. Um. So so that's. That's what I would say to the new owners uh, is try to make, try to get good advice. There's a hell of a lot of advice out there. Mm -hmm. uh, be sure it's someone that you trust that that's really has your best interest in mind. And then make one purchase and, and forget it, you know, and you're typically going to be happy with it. But really do your research on reliability because we do have people that buy guns and, and they'll show up and they've never run more than, you know, 50, 60, 70 rounds in a day through it. You, you push them to five or 600 and they get a little dirty and, you know, things, it, it's real, reliability is a big deal. Because if, why are, what's the end goal? Why are we all uh, spending time on our firearms and training? Because, uh, God forbid, we ever have to use it. We want to know that it's going to work every single time. So, so that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the four things that I, I kind of wanted to concentrate on in this discussion are, of course, the gun, but, but even more importantly than that is you. And some people call it mindset, um, but you. First of all, what is your why? And that's one thing that we always ask people in trainings and, and some of the best trainings I've, you know, I've ever attended. It, it's the same discussion as why are we here? And a lot of times at the beginning of the day, most people would say, I just want to get better. I want to be more proficient. I want to maybe want to be more confident. But at the end of the training, 
when you go back and ask that question, a lot of times it's drastically different. Um, they, they, they go deeper. So what it really boils down to is why do you want a firearm? Typically, it's because you want to protect yourself. Typically, it's what, because you want to protect your family. And a lot of people don't have don't have it in there in that mindset yet of what that really entails. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to behave under stress, but when we talk about practice, people talk about going out and practicing with their firearms. It's under ideal situations. It's typically the weather's good. They're with friends. Maybe they're with family. Um, it boils down to, it's not a stressful situation and you're out there just pressing the trigger over and over and over and you call that practice, you may call it training in certain situations, but let's put in, like you know, we've talked about before, let's, let's throw stress into the situation. How are we gonna react with stress? So a lot of people don't think that far down that road. Um, so that, and, and there's a lot of legitimate reasons to why. It's very, very personal when people start thinking about it. It could be the family or, or, or protection itself. A lot of people just say, I love doing it. It's fun. It's entertaining. And it is. It's some of the best time you're ever going to have. Um, but it, it's, it's really the most important aspect of every bit of this is why do you want it? Why do you feel like it's a necessity? And then what are you willing to do to maximize your ability to use it in a stressful, crappy situation? Mm -hmm. and, and that's a big deal. So mindset is a huge deal. Um, then many people don't think about this at all, but what are you going to gain? If you choose to go train, first of all, where are you going to decide to train? How are you going to decide to train? What criteria are you going to use? Are you going to use uh, word of mouth? Are you going to use online reviews? If you've never stepped off into the training world, where's your direction? So it's real important to utilize a network of people that are out there online or or resources such as yourself. It's just like always, anytime, any, anytime you go buy something, you know, that, you, that you've never had before, you know, you're going to go get an opinion. You're going to call two or three people that you know have, have done it or have one. You're going, hey, what do you think about this? What's your opinion Absolutely. on this? Yep. So, so do your homework. And then, um, a lot of times people don't know quite what to expect. So what do you hope to gain from a training session? And if you're new, which is what we love to specialize in is, is bringing new shooters in and, and making them feel comfortable, making it a good experience for, them, because it's about them. It's, it's not in any way about, uh, speed or, uh, being John Wick or anything like that. It's about their comfort level and their goals. What do you want from from this session or this one day, this two day, this three day session? What are your goals? And we're, we want to help you achieve that. If it's a brand new shooter, I just want to know how to run the gun and be comfortable with it, mm -hmm. then, then great. That's what we're going to do. If it's uh, someone that has a little bit more experience and ability, what is your goal? Well, I want to be able to use a handheld light effectively and efficiently and hit what I want to hit at night. Well, okay, we're going to make that happen. Um, so it's important to set goals before you go train. So pre-training is part of that mindset is why are you going to, why are you here? What is your goal? What do you hope to take away from this? Um, another thing that, that I want people to think about that sometimes they don't think about this until after their first training mm -hmm. is how are you going to face adversity and struggle and failure? Hmm. Okay, and that, that's a big thing, um, because training, training is is designed to build your fundamentals, build a foundation where you can confidently, effectively, safely, safely meaning being the most important, mm -hmm. utilize a firearm. But then, as you grow in your proficiency and in your experience, you are going to be pushed to a point of failure, and failure is not fun. No one likes to fail at something. And we see this, we see this all the time. Uh, we're seeing this and the results of this in our society. We don't let our kids fail enough, okay? We've got a bunch of adults out there that never learned how to fail. You've got to learn how to fail before you can really truly succeed at something. And we open every day of training with, 
guys, let us remember that we are here to get to a point of failure. One, so we have a baseline of what our true abilities are. Mm-hmm. And, that and that's sense. a big deal. Yeah. That's a huge deal. Because when people start failing on the range or anywhere, it's easy to get stuck into this loop. You're spiraling down this this uh, drain of failure and you've got to get out of it yeah. and realize, hey, this is telling me something. This is giving me information about my current level of ability and proficiency, effectiveness, accuracy, right. speed, whatever, whatever you want to say. You know, and I've been to some, so, I've been to some courses that, um, and, and the better ones have this built in, like you're saying, they have, they have a point of failure where, you know, they want to see that failure because that's how they teach you. Uh, yep. but I have been to courses to where, you know, they're just coddling to the students and, you know, they're just there to get them, uh, you know, get the money, get them in, get them out, make them feel good about themselves and then send them on their way, you know, and, and those are some of the worst courses, training classes that I've ever been to. Yeah. That, that's but, not why we're here. <laughs> exactly. And the best ones, like you said, are the ones that push you and, um, you know, failure, you know, I guess that's a good way to put it. Yeah. You know, you know, there, there's a, there's something that we use in our when we have the ability to have a classroom in a little PowerPoint presentation, we we have this scale of unconsciously unskilled, consciously unskilled, consciously skilled, and then unconsciously skilled. And we ask people, you know, where where do you fall? And you can utilize that scale in anything you do, but in your firearms training, abilities, proficiency, whatever word you want to use. Where do you fall on that scale? And you really need to be very honest with you because the stake with yourself because the stakes are so high. And a lot of people never you can see the wheels turning and it's really interesting. And then kind of along that same path of how are you going to handle failure when you have preconceived notions and this this isn't so much the new shooters because they're awesome, they're a blank slate, they typically want to soak it all in, they're attentive, they listen. Women are awesome at it. They process information so much better than men. Men want to get out there and just shoot fast, right? We want to shoot mm-hmm. fast and blow shit up. Yeah. But um, so shooters that have or people that have shot and have experience, they may have these preconceived practices or notions. And when those get destroyed in a good way, when someone when you've been doing something so long that you think it's right, correct, normal – and someone shows you something better and the light comes on and you're like, wow, I've been doing it wrong for so long. How, how are you going to handle that? Some guys, some men, I'll say, some men don't handle that very well. But again, if you try to put everybody in the right mindset, the mental approach to you're going to fail at some of this, mm-hmm. use it to grow – that that's what is the most important thing that we can do. I believe is is setting people up mentally in the right spot before they even start down this this road. Yeah, and, and I'll and add they, this to that also. If you you know you choose to take a training course, you got to go in with an open mind. No, no matter you know what kind of training or how much training you've had in the past, you got to go in with an open mind. And it's like you said, you'll get some of those students that think they know you know, how to do it and what's right. And you show them a different way. I mean, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's a better way. Maybe it's not, but at the same time, don't go in confrontational with your instructor. Sure. And, and, and we, if it's interesting, um, if someone says, well, I don't do it that way. Well, we don't really try to change them. We say, okay, well, we're going to, you know, you just do what you do. And then we ask them to do specific very targeted drills. We'll kind of get to that in a minute Mm -hmm. that are very purpose driven in specifics of fundamentals. And then they, they, they fail, they come apart and then they think, man, why am I not able to do what that person can do or that person can do? Not, not that we want any student comparing themselves to some other target on the range. That's not the point. Sure. But it's 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 this innate thing in humans. We look at other people's performance and we measure ourselves to that performance. It, it's natural. We look around, and people. The light starts to come on for people on their own 
we never really have to push them because the paper pushes them there. Sure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it, it's really, it's really a great thing. Um, so I kind of spun off on that a little bit, but I was trying to get to the four things that I kind of want to talk about through yeah, this preparation ahead. is one being mindset. The gun is another, and we already kind of talked about that. I'm here we'll as an obstacle. I'm only here to make things no, harder no, no, for no. you. No, not at all. I, I make things I'm setting you up for failure, for man. <laughs> I, said, I make things. I'll go down rabbit holes all day long. Um, we tend so to do that mindset, on this show. Yeah, that's okay. Mindset, gun, gear, and then ammo. Okay, so we, we already kind of set the mindset, and we'll be coming back to that inevitably. Yeah. Um, oh, one more thing that I just saw on my notes is – no matter where, whether you like to or not, and you may not be in the habit of doing it, go prepare to take notes and write things down. Because I guarantee you, you're probably going to be overloaded at the end of every day. Yeah. And, and, and it, I don't care if it's on your phone. It could be just whipping the phone out and videoing something. But make some type of notes, some type of documentation where you can go back to. Oh, yeah. Because that is one way... We'll talk about post training that you're going to maximize the information. That's my little uh, notebook yeah, right there. there I'm showing you my the little notebook, my yep. training notebook right there. Oh yeah, you can't beat it. Yeah. It looks like it's about three quarters full on that one. It's got room. Uh, <laughs> it's got room for more. So, um, so taking notes is a big thing, and a lot of people don't like to do it, um, but but that's a big one. So, again, mindset is a big thing. However, you want to whatever word you want to use, it's your your attitude. Okay, we'll just say attitude. Mindset's yeah. really used a lot, but it's attitude. What's your attitude going to be like going into this? Right. We talked a little bit about the gun. Um, for new shooters, it's it's just important to, um, you know, go try a few things and try maybe even try to find a place. And, and I'm not, this is maybe a shameless plug, but try and find a place that will let you show up with, with nothing but ammo and set you up and you can try a lot of different things. That's one of our goals and it's always been one of our goals. Um, if you're a experienced shooter are you going to show up with a new gun okay um consider taking a backup because depending on the gun you show up with it may or may not run for a day or two days or 500 or a thousand or 1500 rounds you know things break things happen mm -hmm. um, but you may want to show up with a backup gun um there's caliber considerations a lot of people and i used to be this this guy um, I used to have the mentality, and maybe this kind of plays into one of those myths we were going to talk about, of I wanted to carry nothing. I didn't want to carry anything, didn't start with a four. So I had a 40 and a 45. Yeah. Well, the more I train, and I still have the 45. I dumped the 40. Um, the more I train, oh, the more I realize, yeah, I dumped the 40. Sorry. Come on. Didn't see. mean to hurt your feelings. Got my, or any, oh, you got your 40 right there. Got my 40 right there. <laughs> Well, for G23, me, baby. G23, that's the first 40 I ever shot. Yeah. Um, for me, personally, I chose the 45 or the 9, and most of what, what, most of what I have is chambered 9. Um, because, again, we want to take shooters, and we want to give them a positive experience and show them how effective they can be. And if they choose to make a different caliber consideration later, that's fine. Um, caliber, frame size, you kind of alluded to that Uh Hands are different sizes. Frames are different sizes. Um, do you fit the gun and does the gun fit you? Just like your shoe analogy. It's real, real important. Yeah. So, um, so much of that's personal when you when you make the, the dive into training, but uh, have your gun prepared. Yeah. Uh, now, now, gear. So, along with that, there's a tremendous amount of equipment that will support that gun. Two of the most important things, and... and and our all handgun training hopefully is, but um, again, our goal is to bring new people or even people that have their license to carry, that carry every day. Maybe they've never done draw work. There are hundreds of thousands of people that are carrying, and you ask them, have you ever done live fire work from the draw? And their answer is no. So the draw work is huge. And a lot of times people don't <laughs> – oh, yeah, another thing about preparing is be sure and read your emails that you get from instructional staff or whoever you're going to train with because yeah. they're going to outline everything you need to bring. And they may even give you holsters that they won't allow on the range. So it's in, in, inevitably people show up with the wrong kind of holster. Yeah. And it's not that 
And it all boils down to safety issue. The wrong holster will create safety issues for you, the shooter, as you're drawing or reholstering the gun. So it's real important yeah. to pay attention to One that. One of my listeners sent me a, a picture of some dude that was, uh, I guess he was carrying uh, on the back. Six o'clock, small of his back. Small yeah, of his back that. and shot his ass. <laughs> yep, the leather, Big, that leather holster. Because he had, you know, like a just a... Uh, a scant like just a millimeter of his trigger wasn't covered in the holster i mean it wasn't the right yep. holster for for his firearm and he caught the trigger somehow and it blew his ass off. yeah it, and and people new to draw work don't understand how important it is and we we try and outline it beforehand and, and email out that all these considerations but in support of your training with your gun a holster is paramount, and then going one step further, the right belt is paramount because the foundation of a good draw is a holster that's mounted solidly. Now, let's let's talk about belts a little bit, and I, we could talk about this crap all day long, but you don't have to go buy some, I'm going to use this word, tactical belt, okay? Yeah. You, I, I, one of my favorite belts that I go work with all the time is a belt I wear every day. It's a two inch wide fossil leather belt and I can do draw work outside the waistband beautifully with it. And it's not even all that stiff. Mm -hmm. So we, we put links up on like website and I push out stuff and say, Hey, this is a good belt. This is a decent belt. You don't have to go buy a war belt to go to a training. And a lot of people have this misconception. They want to get hung up on gear so bad that they're, they miss the point of the simplicity of training. So um, you can make it simple. A good holster, make the right decision on holsters. Um, if you've never done draw work, don't jump right into inside the waistband work. If you, even if you, you, you're carrying inside the waistband and you've never done live fire work from a draw, don't jump right to IWB. You need to do outside the waistband draw work. Okay, so there are safe yeah. there are safety considerations with with holsters. Yeah. Um, belts are a big thing. If you're going to go train, be sure you've got plenty of magazines. Don't show up with two magazines that came with a gun, especially if you're going to be in a class where you're running four to six hundred rounds a day. Mm -hmm. You're going you're going to miss some opportunity. And you know, a lot of this discussion, I, I don't. If if you don't have the right gear, I'm not saying the most expensive. But if you have gear that doesn't work, you are robbing yourself of training time that you're paying for. So it's, that's why preparation is so important. You're spending money. You're spending money on ammo, travel possibly, uh, meals, hotels possibly, your time away from time your job. Time away from that home, work, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, all that. So every second that you spend needs to be maximized and, and productive. Um, ear Pro is important. Uh, we think that electronic ear pro is, is a must and it's really boils down to range safety. Everybody needs to hear commands. You can buy a uh, really good ear pro. Like I've got a ton of the Howard lights that you can find on Amazon on sales for 35, 40 bucks. And they work great. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's some upgrades with the gel cups that make it a little more comfortable, but that's very affordable. Sometimes in windy, real windy situations, you might wind up turning that electronic ear pro off because the wind just washes everything out. Um, but ear pro is a big deal. You know, electronic ear pro. Eye pro is easy to find. Um, mag carriers. There's a lot of different mag carriers to choose from out there. And if you're working outside the waistband, you may not want all the Velcros and bungees and stuff on there. Also, what is the purpose of the training? Is it mostly static work or is there a lot of movement involved if there's movement involved there may be a different selection in gear um so so pay attention to uh and get some advice on mag carriers that's very purpose driven um clothing i want to kind of address clothing because once again i approach a training from a standpoint of what is your end goal what is your daily life like if we have law enforcement come, they bring all of their gear. They bring what they're going to wear to work every day. If a, if most civilians come, they can. I, I want you to bring whatever you want to. Um, I mean, I've got chest carriers, plate carriers, all that kind of stuff. I, I want to know how to use that stuff so I can convey efficiency to people that are wearing them every day. If you own that stuff as a responsible citizen, uh, a civilian, I mean, 
I want you to, to have that experience. But if you're showing up and you're working on your foundation, you may not want all that stuff on. It can cause, it can be a safety issue. So what's the purpose of your specific training during that session? Are you going to show up uh, to a one day handgun, just completely kitted out in a helmet and a plate carrier and plates and all that. And it's 107 degrees in Texas. Probably not. Well, you okay, got to so know what your, your course is too. If it's a tactical course and sure. you know, you're doing tactical training, then you're going to dress appropriately. If it's a, you know, a defensive handgun course, then you want to, you know, wear what you're going to EDC with. Yeah. You know? What, what are you going to go to the movies in? You want to train you know? with what you're going to, you know, your, your gear. Yeah. So sure. Ab- shorts, absolutely. t-shirt, uh, of course, you know, if you're going to be carrying proper belt, proper holster, you know, that kind of stuff. If you carry normally in the waist, unless you're a first time, like you said, you know, that's right. how you want to don't do out of the waist and train out of the waist and you carry in the waist. Exactly. You know, yeah. You, you train like so, you carry. Um, so know your, know the context of your training and your, your end goal. Um, yeah. what do you want to be most proficient? But at the same at? time, don't show up to a tactical course wearing your civilian clothes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, so, and then ammo, you know, ammo, most of the time we're all looking for the lowest cost per round. Um, understand that, that, that might lend itself to some reliability issues, um, which I mean, they're, I bought from certain companies that were now out of business before, and it felt like we'd have two dead primers in, in every magazine for a beginner. That's real frustrating for a seasoned shooter. That's malfunction opportunity, you know. Mm-hmm. Training. So training. Um, <laughs> training, yeah, that's right. So then you've got you know steel case versus brass case versus aluminum. Huge argument there that'll go back and forth. Um, not going to get into that. Again, but that goes options. to knowing your gun. But if you know never shot the gun, gun before, then you, you're not going to know. So exactly. So get some get direction. And, and if, <laughs> if that's the case, you want brass. And there's a lot of people who say, well, if my gun won't eat, won't eat steel, it doesn't deserve brass. That's your that's that's your prerogative. Whatever. You know, do what you want to do. The main thing is if you're attending a training, if it's local and you're you're going to have to buy a volume of ammo, uh, you know, that that evil five hundred or a thousand rounds, mm-hmm. why would anybody need that? Order it well ahead of time. Uh, g- because you've got shipping considerations, especially, especially now. Yeah. Especially now with supply and demand. Um, you if got a course be, three months from now, you need to order your ammo now now you right may, you may get if, your ammo in time if if you're going to be traveling and flying you're going to want to ship your ammo directly to that training site um and and that should be available to you at, you know they should push that information out and give you an address to do that so yeah. um that's pretty easy so all of that and some places into, will sell you the ammo there too so sure absolutely but again yeah. it goes Did, know your instructor and the company and what they offer. And- yeah. And there should be a free flow of information prior to training with all of the, the required gear, directions, itineraries, meal options, all those things should be pushed out to you and, and conveyed to you. So if that's not happening, pick up the phone or email somebody. That way you are prepared. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, and if you're not getting the communication uh, prior to, it's probably a red flag. On, that's on the kind a, of training that's you're a good get. point yeah that's a good point yeah i really hadn't didn't, didn't think about making that point um all right so that's pre-training run up so let's think about a training session that you're going to attend whether it's one two three days day shoot night shoot whatever the case may be room clearing vehicle work the one of the biggest things is to prepare yourself physically the day before and mainly getting sleep and drinking water. Um, being well hydrated is going to help the brain work throughout the day. Um, that's really important. Get up. I know I mean, I'm not a big breakfast eater, but I try and eat something on those days because in most cases, if you're going to a one day training, you're going to be working from eight to six um, and sometimes longer. I've been to trainings that were, were 12 plus hours and it, it gets to wearing on you. Now, I wouldn't suggest going to one of those if, if you're new to training, if it's your first training, you're, new, you're a new gun owner. Um, that's not going to be something you're going to want to tackle because we can only absorb so much information in a day and process it and internalize it and retain it. Yeah. Um, 
So just be prepared. Get some rest. Um, eat. Get calories throughout the day and drink lots of water. Um, you will also inevitably realize that physical fitness plays a role in this. And probably none of us are as fit as we want to be. Um, but being on your feet all day, um, shooting five, 600 rounds a day, it, it takes its toll. And if you're attending a three-day event, know that on day three, that's really going to catch up with you. And it can affect it can affect your brain, you know, and, and how well how well you're going to process information, how well you're going to function. So you've got to take care of yourself throughout your your session. Right. Um, so that's the physical aspect. Keith likes everything about the great outdoors. He's a lot like us. Whether we're bow hunting in the back country or plinking in the backyard, we want to enjoy each experience to the fullest. kel 22 caliber P-17 is Heath's go-to pistol for a good time. On the range, on the trail, and anywhere in between. Weighing in at only 14 ounces with a full magazine, its compact size makes it easy to conceal or tuck away in a small pack, pocket, or space. It comes out of the box ready with a fiber optic front sight, a threaded barrel, a Picatinny rail, and a price point for any budget. With three 16-round magazines, it's ready for hours of pure, unadulterated enjoyment. It's easy, it's affordable, it's accurate, and it's a damn sweet marvel of plinking innovation. The Keltec P-17. It's more bang for less buck. Back to your attitude, your approach, your mindset, however you want to talk about it. Set, you, you should have thought about your daily goals. Identify that you're probably going to be pushed out of your comfort zone. And that, again, is going to involve failure. It should at some point. Hope Not failure from a safety standpoint, but right. failure from a process standpoint. Um, and then really be present when you're when you're doing drills. It's, this also goes to an instructional standpoint of if you're doing a drill and you don't know what the purpose is and how it relates to fundamental application or not even fundamental application, but you need to understand the purpose of a drill. If you don't really know why you're doing something, you're gonna check out and you're just gonna be pressing the trigger and you're just wasting opportunity. So hopefully each drill is very purposefully explained to why, okay? Why are we doing this drill? Why are we instructing you to do this? If someone is just saying, we're going to do this, and they're not saying why, that's an issue in my opinion. So really focus on the purpose of a drill and be present and try not to drift off, you know? While drills are being demoed, pay attention to everything. And when I say everything, we're really just talking about stance, grip, side alignment, trigger, follow through. Okay. Those are easy. Most of those are fairly easy to watch while someone is demoing something. Or if you're splitting up into groups and people are running movement drills, watch their application of these fundamentals, no matter, no matter what the drill is, you're going to take a lot away from that. Um, and again, I go back to the failure aspect. You, you need to learn how to embrace it. If you miss, don't get mad. You need to think through the process and figure out why mm -hmm. and even ask, man, what did I do wrong? I, I, or I don't know what I'm doing wrong. That's part of the, the, the training aspect. Training involves someone there coaching you through a process, trying to see where you're coming apart. Right. And, I mean, there's and nothing more important than if, if you're not getting something right and you don't feel like you're getting it right, stop what you're doing and ask the instructor. Because, exactly. Because, I mean, you could do harm to yourself or your others that are around you. So. Right. And, and, and people need to be able to take criticism. And from an instructional standpoint, that's something that you've got to be able to do very, you know, constructively. Why do everybody's why do coaches, different? Yeah, everybody's everybody's different. different. Everybody's different. So it's important to to embrace that. Know your um, audience. Know your know students. your audience. <laughs> right. Um, so then, as far as gun, uh, be sure your mags are identified. I didn't. I didn't. You know, do that in preparation. Mags should be identified, and numbered. Um, how did your gun function? Was it reliable? Did you have malfunctions? Get to the root of those malfunctions. Was it shooter induced? 
a lot of new shooters will induce malfunctions by a lack of grip. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not allowing the internal mechanisms in the, the gun. Limp the, wrist. The, the, exactly, limp wrist um, that can cause malfunctions. Was it a shooter induced? Was it ammo induced? Was it magazine induced? Okay, um, or was it environmental? So know the difference in those and 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 try and identify that gear. Uh, what if you have gear fail? What if you've got a holster that's crap? Uh, I went to a training, and the first thing we did, a, a CET, combat effectiveness test, and we were being vetted if we could stay in this course. And my appendix holster kept the first three draws. When I drew the gun, the holster was still on the gun. Oh, shit. I had a, I had a major, <laughs> and I missed my par times, and I didn't get my shots off. You think I was not stressed. Yeah. Um, so I had, I had a gear meltdown. Do you have a plan B? Can you run to the vehicle real quick or run to your bag and grab yeah. a replacement? Just um, like that, you said, for your handgun, you know, have a backup holster also. If you, I mean, again, you're getting into money, and, and some people can't afford all this. If you can afford it and it's available to you, backup holster, backup yeah. gun, backup magazines, backup ammo, you know, parts. And that's why it's so important parts to— parts for uh, your gun. Yep. And, make, and have, that's a why it's so important to make, have a cleaning have, kit. Have a cleaning kit. Modern Spartan System's got a great kit. Uh, it's got everything you need in it. Unless you shoot a Glock, then you really don't need to clean them. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. you got to clean them. <laughs> I tell you, I you, locked them. you asked the gunny. He didn't. He had a he had a 45, and I think he said he had like 5,000 rounds through it, and he never cleaned it once. Oh, that, said he yeah. Just, that, said he just oiled it. He put the oil on the, the slide, and that's it. That's really not it. unheard of, putting five or 10,000 rounds through them, and um, but yeah. again, it depends on how dirty and what's your environment. You roll around on the ground and pack one full of dirt, and they can lock up on you. So, yeah. you know, yeah. that's a whole different ball game. Now, clean, then, your you know, clean, clean your guns. Clean your clean your clean your guns, right? Yeah. Um, so that that's kind of my thoughts for the actual training day. Founded in 2012, IWIUS is the USA-based subsidiary of Israel Weapon Industries Limited of Ramat Hasharon, Israel. The IWIUS line of products includes the Tavor X95, the Uzi Pro pistol and SMG, the Galil Ace line of firearms, and the belt-fed Negev line of light machine guns. IWI's mission is to bring the highest quality firearms with real world proven reliability to the U.S. commercial and law enforcement market. IWI U.S. are proud sponsors of the Talking Lead AK Corner and the Lead Head Brigade. Check us out at www.iwi.us and on social media under IWI U.S. So now, no, now we're going to get to the post training. So let's talk about the... All right, so... Whether it be day one, day two, day three, whatever the case is, your post-training is just as important, in my opinion. And I, I think about how we learn. A lot of times things happen so fast that in the moment, you, you don't even really process exactly what happened. I mean, you think about a coach taking a player off the field or off the court and saying, okay, hang on, let I, I want you to sit down over here. And we're going to have a talk here, and then I want you to think about what just happened. And if you're really engaged and, and thinking about what just happened, you think, what went wrong? What went wrong? What, what could I have done different? That reflective process is absolutely important. And again, it boils down to attitude, mindset, your approach, whatever the case may be. Did, did you make an honest evaluation of your level of performance? Okay. A lot of times we're not happy with our level of performance. We're like, man, I, I didn't, I didn't do very good. Or if you're approaching it in the right way, you think, man, did I improve today? Or I grew. This clicked for me. That clicked for me. And people need to know you're not going to get this in one day. You, you can't go to a one day handgun training or a one day rifle training, one day shotgun training, one low light session, and and have it all figured out. Because even though the process is sounds simple. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. It's it's simple yet complex to execute all of those fundamentals at the same time. And a lot of times people will celebrate their success of one of those fundamentals and they're like, man, I'm finally getting my grip every single time I, I built my grip out of the holster. It's coming together and it feels great. Right. So, so that reflective mindset is so important and true learning comes from this reflective process. So... 
if you attend a training with a friend, then you've got an advantage because you guys, if you spend any time together after the fact, you see each other a lot, maybe it's a coworker, maybe you talk on the phone a lot, you will reflect with them going back over this and over this and over this. And so if you didn't, then you've got notes and video that you need to, to go back and reference. Um, this, this may not be a great analogy for a lot of listeners, but I trained horses for a long, long time and we would have people, usually we kept a horse 90 days and we would start them. You know, they were 18 months, 20, 20 months old and people would say, well, I really don't want to bring them for 90 days. Can I just bring them for 30? I'm like, no. Well, what about 60? Well, if you bring them for 60, are you going to go home and ride this horse and continue with this training for another four to five days a week for them to retain their current level of, of training? Right. And we're the same way. If we don't continue with sustainment, both mentally and in practice, it's going to go away. If you go shoot and you go to a one, two, three day training and you don't revisit those fundamentals for even a month, you're going to go back and think, man, how was I building? How did I need to build my grip? And and it may not come together. So right. the mental reflective process, going back over notes, looking at videos, that's a big deal as far as, as you retaining that information. Then as far as gear and gun, what failed, what worked, what did you like, what didn't feel good? Um, those are all really quick determinations you can typically make. May, and, and the other great thing about these environments, at least in my experience, is everybody that's out there with you will be more than happy to let you shoot their gun or even try a holster or, you know, that everybody's there for the same reason. Yeah, absolutely. And they, everybody wants to see everybody else succeed. I mean, we, we end our handgun trainings a lot of times with shooting at a, a target that's about 150, 160 yards away. And it's like the loudest cheering section section you've ever heard when somebody hits that thing for the first time. <laughs> Everybody's yeah. just so supportive. And, and that's, you know, that's what we've always seen in our environments that everybody's there to grow and have fun. And they love to see other people do the same. Yeah. Very good. Um, so now with sustainment, what can you do at home? That's not going to cost you any ammo. You hear this a lot. I'm sure all your listeners have heard this a million times, but dry fire, dry fire, dry fire over and over and over and there's proper ways to do that and there's also improper ways to do that and when i say that i mean proper ways meaning if you're really going to continue manipulating the trigger effectively and building that trigger work into your memory mm -hmm. muscle memory you could say but it's it's basically reinforcing all those neural pathways you've got to dry fire in a specific way and and we could talk for a while about that, but we're going to move on. But dry fire practice is very, very important. And we did a we did a great episode on that a few episodes back with Niels Jonasson, the uh, sponsored shooter uh, by Canic. And we talked about yeah. dry firing uh, with Niels. I saw a portion of that. I didn't I didn't see the whole thing, but I saw a portion of when he was on. And then um, you know range time. A lot of people can't get to a range, or if they can go to a range, you're not allowed to. Uh, fire more than once every three seconds. You can't do draw work. There's limitations. Yeah. Um, that that's kind of an obstacle to overcome. But again, just being mental reflection and doing dry fire work at home is is really important. And then hopefully you make the decision to continue your training. And there's so many great avenues out there. Even even trainings that I've been to that maybe I didn't get a lot of uh, input. From an instructor standpoint, mm -hmm. I, I got a lot of input from myself and the people around me. Uh, yeah. So, you know, there's you, you can always take good and bad. You can learn good and bad. It's all in your approach. Uh, it's all in your mindset, right? It's all in your yeah, attitude. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's the key. That's the number one thing right there. When you go into this, you got to have the right attitude. And hopefully, you know, the reality of it all smacks you in the face. One, that we hope we never have to use this skill set. It should be a last resort. But every training I ever go to or put on, I realize how complicated a situation would be. And my brain needs to be processing that decision and not the tool. Yeah. I need to have mastered the tool. Very good. These are some great tips. And if you leadheads have questions and you want to know more from Jared, you can shoot him an email, get in touch with him on his social media. 
Jared, give them that info. Yeah, the uh, website uh, right now is 212firearmstraining.com. If you uh, go to 212 Training Group, it'll also take you there. Um, we're on Instagram, 212 Training Group. You can DM us. Uh, my phone number is on the website. We're, we're here for, for anybody. So, you know, we just want to be a resource. We don't know it all. Don't claim to know it all by any means. We just want to share our experience. Very good. Now, you've got some classes and courses coming up. Talk about uh, where our lead heads, if they're in those areas, how they can sign up and join one of your, your courses, one of your classes. Yeah, right now we've got um, two-day AK on the calendar for July 18, 19 here in Texas. Oh, um, it's going to be hot. Texas, yeah, it is <laughs> going to be hot, but um, we we got some guys that are, are jumping in and ready to go. Um, we are doing some combo handgun and license to carry classes in the very near future we're fixing to put one on the calendar the way we do those for texas license to carry is we do a four-hour shooting and proficiency block where we do cover the draw and things like that and then we roll into the state curriculum Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a full day class most of the ltc classes are are just the half day and they go to four and a half hours of class and then you go shoot we we choose not not to take that path Uh, we want to give people a little bit more information uh, then we've got Sturgis, South Dakota is going to be a three-day defensive combo class. It's actually going to be open to AK, AR uh, shooters both, okay. and we're, we're going to do some handgun work there too. So that's at the end of August. And uh, we're working to build out the rest of the training calendar. September's a little bit full. We're doing uh, hosting and working with Haley Strategic Partners in September here in Texas. There are still some slots there for that, I know, for the, the D3 handgun, which is low light. If you mm-hmm. guys are interested in that, if you haven't been to their website, check that out, halostrategic.com. And then we're, you got we're any just AKs to, in September? Uh, not at this point. September's pretty full, and I just saw that they released Red October dates for the end of September, and I'm not even going to be able to go this year because uh, we'll be doing uh, HSP work. I see you're wearing uh, your Red October shirt there. Yeah. <laughs> wear it everywhere i can man nice um nice and then i know i, mean, I that, really liked it would come out to the ak the ak course but uh you know july about that time there's you know there's a lot going on and of course it's hot as fuck in texas so <laughs> yeah we, we would i would put a little shade over you oh you know, yeah over. whatever <laughs> everywhere you go i'd put one of those little canopies when you're doing home work and just let you sit in the shade you have a little guy running around with an umbrella for me <laughs> yeah that would be funny uh no but seriously guys go check them out 212 training uh, their website uh, their social media jared's constantly posting uh information on his social media are you, are you posting videos you got a youtube channel you do any videos anything like that yet we we just started uh, the youtube channel and and quite honestly i haven't put a lot of content up there but we're gotcha. trying to just throw some videos short videos up and samples of our training sessions and stuff like that on ig tv and okay uh, but we'll work on the youtube stuff well jared it's wants to i'm consumed yeah, it is it is jared wants to reward you leadheads he has got a nice little prize that he wants to he wants to do a little giveaway a little contest and tell them yeah. what what do we got so, here, Jared? Right here in my hands, I've got uh, the Haley Strategic Surefire Deft Light, the Ooh. handheld <laughs> Surefire Light. Uh, you can only get these on the HSP website. I've got one we're going to throw out to a lead head. Hell um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a really awesome light uh, for doing, doing uh, handheld light techniques with a handgun. It's really uh, pretty valuable. You can do do a lot with it. The Surefire Rogers technique is fantastic with it because by design, um, that's what it was designed to kind of maximize. It's got an awesome ring on it that allows you to build that grip. Um, very cool. And then it's, it's very versatile. So, yeah, it's awesome light. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to tell you what you need to do to be eligible to win that uh, right after we do Talking Lead Back to Fight the Myths. And Jared has a good fact to fight the myths for you lead heads right now so fact to fight the myth so um this is this is a little bit debatable it'll it'll ruffle some feathers um, i hope so and i hope so the, the the fact that 
that I have to back it up is just my personal learning experience. Mm-hmm. So some may not call that a fact, but we'll not get hung up on words. Sure. Um, and, and it has to do with the prize. You know, a lot of people think that you have to run um, or you must need to, can't live without running a weapon mounted light on your handgun. Um, so let's talk about a few of the advantages or disadvantages of that. The okay. number one disadvantage that, that I faced from a process or functionality issue is my thumbs weren't long enough to really actuate those switches. Okay. Um, I run X300s and TLR1s and love the idea of it, but I felt like I had to break my grip too much to actuate the light. Secondly, I was I have been inconsistent at maintaining light discipline, meaning I couldn't make it go on and off exactly when I wanted to. Uh, it would either stay on or as I was drawing, it would flash. And when you get into tactics, that's kind of a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Um, thirdly, I don't like searching with my muzzle because the light is directly under the muzzle and I've got a loaded loaded handgun. I would so rather the, be a- breaking the one of the firearm rules of don't point your firearm anything you're not ready to destroy. destroy. Exactly. If I'm I mean what percentage of the community has a handgun by their bedside? A very large percentage. Home yes. defense gun. Yes. And a lot of us slash them, I will say us, because I have done it, and I still have the capabilities of mounting a light there. We have it there for things that go bump in the night, inside, outside, wherever. And if we're searching that environment, and we have loved ones in the house, we may be pointing a muzzle at one of our loved ones. And I had handgun lights, weapon-mounted lights on every one of my handguns and holsters for every one of them. And I had that set up, and every time I would go shoot, I would have that weapon light on my handgun until until I went to my first low-light training. That was an HSP D3 vehicle darkness training. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started failing at running my light. And then I discovered the handheld light. And handheld lights come in so many different varieties with so many different switches and setups that it's very difficult sometimes to make a handheld light do what you want it to. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm celebrating this light design right here. That's why I want to give one away because they're awesome. And once you put a little more time and investment in your training and yourself, okay, once I increase my level of training, my skill level, my ability – and I got more comfortable, and I did the sustainment, the dry fire, then I don't rely on the, the weapon light anymore. Now, yeah. some people like to have that redundancy. They want that backup, and that's absolutely your prerogative. Sure. Um, it, but it doesn't fit me. It doesn't fit my hands. It doesn't fit, um, you know, ergonomically. It doesn't work for me. Now, I'm not going to say that it, it doesn't work for somebody else. So, Aaron uh, Keener, fantastic shooter, one of our instructors, great friend. He's a phenomenal machine when it comes to running a gun, running a handgun. And he runs his weapon mounted light beautifully. He does go back to utilize and train with a handheld light. That's his, that's his primary. Sure. And the weapon mounted light is going to be his secondary. Um, so anyway, is that a myth out there? Maybe. But so much of it's based on on you know personal opinion. Either way, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, yeah. you bring up you bring up something to think about, you know. Yeah. And so and, and if you're of the school of you know you don't want to point it at anything that you're not ready to destroy, then you know like you said you have that you could you could do it both. You could have it on there, but you could also have the hand do the pre scan with the the hand light, and then you know if you've identified or things start to really get hairy, then you know didn't draw your weapon and. There you go. But it's like it's, it's it's anything. It's how you train. The more you train with it, the more proficient you're going to get and, exactly. and better at it. Um, but if it's something that you're just not comfortable with, then there are other options. And, you know, and the handheld light is one of those. And we're going to make that possible for one of you lead heads now. So great, yeah, great, wait, man. great fact to fight the myth. You know, I'll put my yeah, favorite quotes yeah. up. But 
uh, <laughs> definitely a good a good topic, good subject to to talk about there. Now, drum roll. Blah, 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 what are you leadheads going to have to do to win this light? So, as you know, if you're an, an avid listener, an avid leadhead, part of the leadhead brigade, you know that we make posts of every show that we do. We post them on Instagram, post them on Facebook. Uh, and then, of course, they go out to all the the podcasting apps. So when I do, when I'm doing this post for this show that we're doing with Jared right now, uh, we want comments on the Instagram and Facebook. We're going to do Instagram because some people don't have Instagram, some people don't have Facebook. And if you don't have either of those, then shoot me an email because we want to be inclusive with this. But we really want to get the the Instagram and, and Facebook interaction going here. Uh, we want you to like 212 Trainings Instagram and Facebook, which is? 212 underscore training underscore group. Okay. That's Instagram. And then uh, the Facebook is 212 Firearms Training. Okay. And I'll have links when I post this. So you can you can go and click on it, and, and you'll be able to link on Instagram. You'll be able to link on Facebook. Go and subscribe and like his stuff. And my challenge to you guys is whoever wins this, you got to go learn how to use it. You got it's, yeah. it's a tremendous tool. You do. You got to do that. But here's what we want. We want, we want, I want to know, all right, how do I want to say this? So in the comments section, under the post that I make for this show, um, I want you to comment on training courses that you've taken in the past. Tell, tell me how many, what you've taken, uh, how you liked it. If you want to name the company, you can name the company. That's fine. Uh, or if you've never taken one, I want you to tell me what's one that you are researching to take. Yeah, and when you guys include what you've taken and, and what you took away from it, that's just going to be more guidance for people that are out there looking for training. That's how we spread the word. On, on good training. So that's going to be really valuable. Absolutely. So that's that's how you're going to be eligible to, to win this. And then what Jared and I are going to do is after a week or so, uh, you know, we'll give everybody an opportunity because I know people are behind listening on the show. Uh, you know, we'll give you a, maybe a couple of weeks. And then Jared and I are going to go on live, whether it's Instagram or Facebook, whatever we decide. And we're going to have that bird make the, <laughs> the announcement. That's, <laughs> Sorry, that's I'm outside on the porch. I know, that's fine. <laughs> uh, we're going to announce the winner on that live uh, broadcast. And uh, we'll contact the winner also. But we're going to want you to tune into that live broadcast uh, where we're going to make the announcement for the winner. So there you go. So tell them again the details on that prize, the light that we're giving away. Yeah, I was trying to mute out these birds. Oh, no, that's here. fine. Just keep it um, running. Again, it is the the HSP Halo Strategic Partners Deft Light. It's their collaboration with Surefire, built by Surefire, designed by Travis Haley, Halo Strategic Partners. Um, it's a phenomenal light. It's very purpose designed, designed very purposefully um, as a fighting light, combat light, guys. Um, it is 500 lumens. It's got one setting. That's it. It's going to burn some retinas, so it's a badass light. And I'm looking up what the MSRP is on that. 179 I believe. Okay, there you go. So, I mean, you're looking at a $180 light there, guys. So, very nice flashlight. So, I want to see, I want to see participation on this. We'll see lots of participation. And, again, you got to go... And like and subscribe to 212 Training social meds, and then in the comments section, you know, talk about the training that you've had in the past. Uh, you know, big takeaways, and if you plan, if you haven't had any training, who you're researching, where you'd like to go and train, and be sure you're tagging Talking Lead and 212 Training. Yeah, definitely. Very good. Jared, that was an awesome show. I learned a lot. Um, I mean, as a you know, a firearm owner, you know, our good our good friend Paul Markle. Do you know Paul? I do not. S- student of the gun. Oh you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're all you're a student for life. You know, you're always learning. You know, always be learning something. And um, Jared just gave you guys some great tips on how to get the most out of 
the training courses. You're going to spend the money. You're going to spend the time. You know, get the most out of it. And like I said, if you have questions, you can email him directly. Shoot me an email, talking at gmail.com. I can get in touch with Jared. And definitely go to his website, 212 Training Group. Is it 212 Training Group? Yeah, yeah that'll get you there. We're in the, we're in the process of uh, changing over the website, uh, different domain name. But 212 training, training Group will get you there, okay. and it'll take you to 212 Firearms Training. Very cool. And then, of course, as always... Go support those that sponsor this show that make it possible for you leadheads each and every week. Keltech Weapons. Check them out, keltechweapons.com. Go to their social meds. Let them know that you're a leadhead. Mission First Tactical. Use that leadhead discount code, 20% off. LEO Takedown, same thing. Leadhead is the, the code. You're going to get 10% off there. And uh, Fioki Ammo. Uh, they make the the really good 223 ammo that I've been running here lately. They've got some 762 by 39. They've got 9 mil. They've got they've got pretty much any caliber you want. The 12 gauge, I've been running some of their 12 gauge through my turkey gun and that uh, Kalashnikov USA Comrade. The uh, it's not a rifle, it's not a pistol shotgun. It falls in the middle there, but that short barreled 12 gauge shotgun that KUSA has put out. Their double aught buck runs great through that. It's got adjustable gas settings so you can adjust for different kind of loads. So uh, the, the Fioki ammo runs great through that too, the 12 gauge. Check them out, Fioki USA on the social media to let them know that you support them, your Leadhead, part of the Leadhead Brigade. Uh, Modern Spartan Systems, they use that code at Modern Spartan Systems which is TLCP15. You're going to get 15% off. And then uh, ASP USA, if uh, you don't get win this uh, Haley Strategic Flight, you can go there, get 20% off their flashlights. I've been running several of their dual fuel lights and have been very happy with uh, the performance that I've been getting out of uh, the ASP lights. And uh, really loving the ability to be able to switch from the rechargeable batteries to just the standard type batteries uh, that you can run through their, their lights as well. ASP USA. Uh, and then, of course, go and, spot, no, sponsor. go and support Sheepdog Impact Assistance. They've got that charity ball coming up. I'm going to give you guys more information on that so that you can take part in. They're going to do an online auction like they did last year, so you have the ability to bid on some of the cool stuff that our sponsors and friends of the show are putting up for that in addition to i mean who knows what else that they've got on there they've always got some great stuff uh, and then century arms and occam defense solutions sponsors of the tongue led ak corner and now iwi us is a sponsor of the ak corner glad to welcome them aboard definitely go show the iwi some love welcome them uh, to the talking lead lead head brigade family so, Jared, that does it for another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast. I appreciate you being on again. Man, I can't thank you enough. I, I can't thank you also enough for, for what you do. And the the guests that you have are just wealth. You know, it's just a wealth of information and knowledge and, and gives people a tremendous resource. So, I thank you very much. Leducating the uneducated since 2012. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do here, buddy. And, uh, That's awesome. And we're glad that you're a part of the family now. I uh, expect to have you back many times. To, uh, well, thanks for having me. And hopefully we can work it out where I can get down to one of your classes or we can have you up here and maybe put on a, uh, a Talking Lead sponsored training course. That would be phenomenal. I think we could definitely make that happen. Until next episode, as always, keep your loved ones close. And keep your firearms closer and never stop learning. And make sure you go to 212traininggroup.com. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent! All we are is dust in the wind, dude.